Hey guys. Hello, and hello everyone else as well. So I haven't seen this video, but apparently it's a response back to me after I responded to this guy, and I actually liked this guy's attitude when I responded to him before. He seems like a cheerful dude, he seems likely to take this kind of thing in the right way, which is with good humor, and you know, it's not really a big deal, we're just exchanging thoughts on the internet. So without even having watched it, I figure, what the hell, I'll jump back in, respond back, and just see how it goes. Welcome to another episode of... Questions for Atheists. Good, I've been waiting for episode two. I should have just waited till the end and binge-watched it. This is episode two. Yeah, that's what I said. And, um, I'm doing another one because, you know, business, supply and demand. Oh yeah? People liked the last one? Or at least watched it a lot? I mean, I can't say the questions themselves were especially good, but they were good food for conversation. The first one went viral. Viral? Really? A questions for atheist video of you sitting in your car went viral? I'm surprised. Let's see, you got 3,000 views. Well, I mean, it's pretty damn good for a channel with 120 subs, I'll give you that. I don't know what the cutoff is for viral. I didn't really see it posted around anywhere either. Where was it viral? Because a big YouTube channel, atheist channel, he had like 120,000 subscribers did not one, not two, but three videos of me. Well, that sounds like a waste of time. Wait a minute, you're talking about me, aren't you? Still sounds like a waste of time. You know, a nobody with over a hundred subscribers. Oh yeah, shit, I'll respond to pretty much anyone. Doesn't matter what size their channel is, could be a million, could be a hundred. I mean, your argument is just as valid or invalid or at least worthy of discussion, regardless of the size of your channel, right? My arguments don't become more worth responding to just because my channel's bigger. You might say maybe if your goal is to address the most widespread claims and kind of have the most impact you possibly can, then it might be worth prioritizing bigger channels for responses, but that's not really my goal. My goal is more to entertain. And to entertain myself. I mean, I kind of like to take these arguments and just chew on them. You know, roll them around in my head, look at them from different angles, see what I think, talk about it while I'm doing it. That's just kind of what I do. I do that when I'm not making videos, too. I pretty much spend all day talking my wife's ear off about my opinions about this or that thing. She doesn't seem to mind too much. She does the same thing back, so two peas in a pod. I'm the peas, she's the pod. So yeah, your channel is small, but I found your video, I liked it, I thought it would make good content, and I thought what you were saying was misguided enough that it warranted a response. Even if you never saw it necessarily, if other people saw it and they were thinking similar things, maybe it could kind of clue them in that their way of thinking is a little bit off. So, you know, whatever. Who am I? How did he find out about me? Oh, I have like a list of keywords that I tend to go and search when I'm looking for videos. And probably for you, I just searched for good old trusty atheists. Very effective keyword. Less so now because YouTube search really sucks, but still kind of works. And he actually made videos about um, Kent Hovind, Todd Friel, even Muslim apologist Zakir Nayak which has over 2 million subscribers. I know, depressing, isn't it? In fact, he's almost at 3 million, and that's just the tip of the iceberg with him, too. People are dumb. And he put me on the same level as them? No, I don't think I put you there. I think you just are there. Not in sub count, sure, but I mean, you're just a guy with an opinion just like all the rest of them. What's the difference? You're on YouTube, they're on YouTube. You made the big time, buddy. So much so to make three videos of me? Yes and no. I mean, if you want to be real, a video in three parts is just an hour-long video in three parts. So it's kind of one video, but a long video. Yeah, you had a lot to say and I had a lot to say about it. It was actually pretty good for getting me talking, which is the sign of good response material. You know, if I don't have anything to say, if all I have to say is nuh-uh, then it's something I probably won't even bother responding to. What would be the point? It's much more fun if I can go somewhere at least somewhat interesting with it, you know, spend some time digging into stuff. So yeah, I mean, I disagree with pretty much everything you said in your entire video, mostly, but still I liked it. Plus, unlike Kent Hoven, Todd Friel, and Zakir Naik, it didn't make me feel absolutely miserable and done with the world. So that's a big point in its favor. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. 
Cool. I mean, to me, it doesn't feel like much, right? To me, yeah, okay, I managed to get a hundred and whatever thousand subscribers in just about 10 years. I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary here, but that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, that's just a product of time and consistency and uh, building kind of a reputation, just gradually having people get to know who I am. But still, at heart, I'm still a small YouTuber. I mean, fundamentally, the stuff I'm doing here is the same stuff I was doing back when I had a hundred subscribers, just like you do now. And that's another reason why I don't really consider it a big deal to make a video responding to someone with 100 subscribers. It's because I consider you just like me. Because you are. And plus, also, I think I have a pretty reasonable viewer base. I don't think you're going to get flooded with a bunch of total assholes who are just saying awful things to you and whatever, trying to dox you or some horrible shit. If any of my viewers are like that, it's a very, very, very small minority. Sometimes I'll go to a channel I've responded to, and most of the time it's just people kind of arguing the points. And sure, there's an insult here and there, but nothing too egregious, right? And that's the kind of thing I like to have. I like to be able to actually interact with smaller YouTubers and not feel like I'm a bastard for doing it, because it's the thing I've been doing from day one, and it's just one of the things I want to do. My channel might be a bit bigger than it was 10 years ago, but but I still want to be able to interact the same way I used to, just responding to random people on a whim. I don't want to have to stop that or exclude certain people from responses just because of the size of my channel. And you don't seem too bothered, so good. Putting me up there such a high pedestal. Yeah. No, I just responded to you like a person with a YouTube channel. It's not a pedestal, unless you want to say everyone else is on the same pedestal. And in fact, I really would rather reply to you than I would to Kent Hovind or Zakir Nike. You seem more like a normal person and less like a scumbag. Todd Friel's the exception, I still kinda like him because he's just this special kind of dick that I can't quite place, but I like him. And it was nice. He answered, answered all my questions respectfully. He never insulted me. Didn't I? Oh my god, I knew I was forgetting something. That's out of character. Well shit, your questions couldn't have been that bad then. It was it was pretty nice, but he's kind of strange. He covers his face and wears sunglasses and wears a hat. You're kind of underselling the strangeness. It's a pantyhose face, 3D glasses, and a top hat. I mean, covered face, sunglasses, and a hat sounds like everybody I see nowadays. And walks around in weird patterns while answering questions. Oh, by the weird pattern, I guess you mean this? Yeah, about that. I swear, I really do plan to get a proper background. It'll happen. Um, whether it's before or after the next Kent Hovind episode, I can't say. I don't get it, but hey, it works. I got him over 120,000 subscribers. You know, you gotta... He found his shtick, you know, people like that. Some, yeah, I've probably scared off more subscribers than I've attracted, but hey, what do you do, right? If I started showing off my disgusting flapping mouthworms now in every video, all the existing 120,000 would disappear, so big risk. Better just stick to what works. Plus, I'm a horrifying burn victim, or syphilis survivor, or reptoid. Whatever I am, you don't want any part of it. Me, I don't have. I just get bored. I'm like, let me go sit in my car and make another video. Yeah, okay, now that you brought it up, what is with the Christians in Cars phenomenon? Do you only have computers in your cars? What happened to your house? I'm not even kidding. I'm actually curious what the motivation is for filming in the car. I would never want to do it. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, a lot of his followers came to my um, Questions for Atheist video, flooded it. And unlike him, a lot of a lot of you guys were mean. Were they? Let me see. 1,400 comments. Oh, wow. You guys had a lot to say about this. Wow. Okay, look, people, you were especially active on this one, I can tell. And I just want to say, any of you who are just outright mean for the sake of it, like in a seriously bad kind of way, don't be dumb. Now, I scrolled through the comments and just kind of skimmed them, and I didn't see too much in there that was too crazy. There were some where I thought, okay, tone it down a bit, come on. At least make some kind of a point. But I also saw a lot of people doing that, making points, and it didn't jump out to me as an overly hostile comment section, I think. Something to keep in mind is that each one of the people leaving a comment is just one person, right? And if some of them say something a little bit snarky or a little bit insulting while they're responding to you, and if some of them are also just outright insulting with no substance, it can start to seem by the numbers like a really severe thing, but in actual fact those rude comments are really just a small percentage of individual people who are saying nonsense. So I'm just saying try to put it in perspective. But I certainly don't encourage it. Let's not make a habit of people going over to people's videos and leaving insulting comments all the time. 
I include the link unlike a lot of channels, and the reason I do that is because for one thing, I think you guys are better than that, which for the most part you are, and because I really want people to be able to see the full context of what I'm replying to. I think it's important for the original video to be viewable by people, because otherwise you don't know if I've cut something out or what I've cut out. You don't know if you're really getting the full picture. And a lot of people stopped years ago including those links because they don't want their audience going over and leaving nasty comments. But I kind of believe that people are generally okay. That if you cultivate a culture of relative civility that most people are going to behave in accordance with that. And I think I'm right, most people do. And I hope that it continues to be that way. Now one thing I think I need to point out to you though, uh, what was your channel name again? Choose Jesus, yeah. Is that your video already wasn't the most polite thing ever made on YouTube. This is insane. They teach this in schools, they're brainwashing children with the satanic garbage. It's stupid. Come on guys, think. That's insane. That's insane. That's craziness. You guys are emotional, you're not intelligent. You know, you mistake your pretentiousness with intelligence and wisdom. No wonder why atheists act like monkeys, because they believe their grandparents were monkeys. Atheism is from Satan. You guys are gonna go to hell. You guys are not happy. All of you have an existential crisis that you're filling up an empty void with drugs, probably sex, pornography, work, money, you know, yourself, you worship yourself probably. When you talk like that, even if you're not leveling the insults at one individual in particular, you're still not really inclining people to be polite to you back. If you're bothered that people were a little snarky at you in your comments, you kind of opened the door to that yourself. So I discourage it, but at the same time I don't have a whole lot of sympathy. Guys, I'm very sensitive. Stop insulting. Just... Answer the questions and go about your merry way. We're not enemies. You're very sensitive, but you talk like you did in that video. Then don't make YouTube videos talking like that, man. I don't know what to tell you. If you're peppering insults all through your video, people might pepper a few insults into their comments. Frankly, you're lucky I was as polite as I was. You didn't deserve it at the time. And I'm not upset by it. I was amused by it. That's why I liked your video. But still, you can't have your cake and eat it too, Mr. Sensitive. You get the response you invite. So figure out what you want next time and act accordingly. If you want other people to just answer your questions and go about their merry way without insulting you and not feel like you're their enemy, then just ask the questions and go about your merry way without insulting them. Don't dish it out if you can't take it. Ah, whatever, do what you want. It's just some very good advice, that's all. Like, do you see theists as your enemies just because we believe in God and you don't? I can't speak for anyone else, but for my part, no. But if they're making videos insulting atheists every which way all the way through, I might think that they want to be my enemy. I don't, but I think it's an understandable guess. You know, just because you end a video with, oh, guys, I love you and I totally don't want you to go to hell and I love you, that doesn't negate the 15 minutes that came before it. Don't be silly. No, that's silly. We could live, coexist in harmony with lots of hugs and kisses. Yeah, we could, or we could be adults and we could just uh, talk to each other about our ideas and occasionally insult each other and not whine like little babies about it and just kind of get on with our day. I kind of thought from your other video that that's the kind of guy you are. Why would you talk like that if you weren't? And yet here you are with this toddler tear fucking garbage I see all over the internet nowadays. Harden the fuck up or at least start minding your manners so you're not a giant hypocrite. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. In uh, this episode, I only have one question. I'm not going to. Yeah, let's not do a whole thing again. And I forgot my pencil. I know you guys love the pencil. That, I wanted that to be my shtick, just like how um, Ray Comfort is the banana man. I want it to be the pencil man, but nah, I don't want to do that. It's too corny. Maybe you could be the corn man. Look, corn is perfectly suited to the human hand. It has a little fork that goes in the end here, and a little fork that goes in the end here, and then you can bite off tidy rows from left to right, just like you're reading a book. If that's not proof of intelligent design, I don't know what is. Anyways, in the first video, I was just bored. Went in my car and started ranting, and... Guys, he, he chose, like, one of my first videos, which was wasn't even that good. No, it really wasn't, was it? I don't know if your videos have improved since, I haven't looked. Except at this one. And so far I'm not convinced. So this time I came a little bit more organized. I actually wrote down the, the question, alright? Well, wow, moving up to pro tier. So, alright, so you don't believe you were created by God? Correct. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you would, please... Or have a soul. Oh, there's more. Never mind. And you came from a slimy, stinky, primordial ooze, which means you don't have free will. <laughs> okay. Did you write that part down too? All right. Question for you. 
what do you mean exactly by free will, and why does that mean you don't have it? It's not a scientific question at this point, it's a philosophical one. But yeah, what's your reasoning for that? And then furthermore, why would being created by a god mean you do? have free will? And how is this compatible with omniscience? I'm certainly not just going to hand you no god means stinky primordial ooze and no free will, and god means no stinky primordial ooze and free will for free. You're going to have to actually make a point. And you think you will just be rendered non-existent for eternity someday. I was going to say something, but I don't want to be too nitpicky, so yeah, pretty much. Right? Basically, yeah. So this means you're just a machine. Again, I don't want to be too nitpicky about this. The answer is pretty much yes. I could talk a bit more about what that means, but I don't think I need to, at least not right now. I'd just be wasting time. A machine like other machines, but a machine made out of meat. Among other things, sure. And someday your meat will expire and you will be no more. Aww. Uh-huh. Weird moment for sarcasm. I don't quite get it. So my question is, why is a meat machine with no free will telling, or sometimes telling angrily, a flesh robot with no free will, it's thinking wrong? Because it's thinking wrong. Okay, to be a little bit less flippant, what exact situation are we talking about? What situation are we in where I'm telling you you're thinking wrong? There are two things I can think of that make sense here. The first would be that you have opinions that are just untrue, like you're saying things that are just wrong, incorrect, factually. And the second would be that you're reasoning in a way that leads you to conclusions that are incorrect factually, that is, faulty logic. Either way, these have to do with truth and falsehood, right? Either you think something that's not true, or you're thinking in a way that will make you think something that's that's not true. In which case the answer is, the reason I would tell you that is because we're having an argument about whether or not something's true, you're saying it's true, and I'm telling you your reason for thinking it's true doesn't actually show us that it's true. I mean, that's really the extent of the answer. What do you want from me? Doesn't matter if you're created by God, if you're not created by God, if you're a meat robot, if you're some kind of spooky ghost, if there's free will in whatever sense you mean, or if there's no free will in whatever sense you mean, the answer is still the same. We're both humans and we do these things because these are things humans do. Doesn't really matter what you think a human is or where it comes from, it's still a human. If you want to talk about the evolutionary incentives for this kind of behavior, fine, but I don't think that really is what you're asking. In fact, I don't really understand what you're asking. Now, certainly the concept of right and wrong becomes subjective, which makes it meaningless. No, truth and falsehood is not subjective. Truth and falsehood are conformity to reality. Reality is what reality is, always, whether there are people or not. Reality is what's true regardless of whether anyone notices. If there's a god, there's a god whether he made people or not. If there's no god, there's no god whether there are people or not. It's not subjective. What are you, one of these weird relativist people who thinks that all truth is just a matter of opinion? That things become true or false depending on your thoughts about them? Or depending on who believes them? If that's where you're at, I'm going to end this video right now because there's absolutely no point talking to you. When one renders itself an evolved bag of blood with no free will and will cease to exist for eternity. Okay, HK47, your opinion has been noted. That doesn't make it true. Maybe you should argue for it. And that is my question. What is? Why do I tell you you're wrong when you're wrong? I don't know, gotta pass the decades somehow, right? If I'm bored enough to do this already, imagine what eternity would be like. So I look forward to your answers. I do answer back. Some of you know that because we, we've been going back and forth for days. You can't mind it too much if you're in there arguing with people and you made another video. Wait a second though, that's seriously the whole question you had? I don't even know what your point was. Oh well, easy video, eh? All the thousands of questions I get, just go to the first video, questions for atheists. There's over a thousand questions. I answer them all because I enjoy this. See, to me, this is old YouTube. This is what YouTube was like when I got here. People just making stupid videos back and forth, not taking it all that seriously, arguing with a bunch of randos in the comments about nonsense. Ah, uh, feels good, man. And it's my moral obligation to tell you the truth, you know, when I became a Christian. Why, you're just a meat robot. You might not think you are, but you still are. And yet amazingly, you still have motivations and you still do things like every other animal on the planet. Holy shit. That's insane. That's crazy. Why wouldn't you just sit in a blank white room staring at a wall until you just kind of die? Life is so mysterious. And unlike you guys, you guys really don't have a moral obligation to 
to tell the truth because where do you get your moral standards from? Oh boy, okay. You know what? I want this video to be one and done. I'm not making a part two of this. Let's not do this right now. If you're actually curious, uh, what the hell was your channel name again? Choose Jesus, right. That's so generic. You gotta pep it up a bit. If you're curious, CJ, I've talked about this in many, many, many videos over the years, so go do the thing that you're probably not gonna do. Oh, we're getting off subject. Maybe that'll be the third video. Um, questions for Atheist Part 3. I'd say I'll keep an eye out for it, but I'm subscribed to like over a thousand channels on my potential response account, so I'll probably just miss it, but DM me on Discord if you want. But anyways, I look forward to hearing you guys. I love you. No, you don't. You feel like you have to say you do, but you don't. We're not enemies. I'll agree with you on that, yeah. God bless you. Yipper. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, that was a thing, so thanks for watching. If you would, please give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. Huge thanks, as always, to every single one of my supporters on every platform. If you want early access, sign up to the email list, list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.